All right. Back again with more Monica. You know how I was talking earlier about becoming a citizen and getting a job when I finally cross over? Well, I've been thinking about what kind of jobs I might be cut out for. I guess an obvious choice would be a writer or something that has to do with literature. That would be fitting, seeing as I started my own literature club and everything, don't you think? Oh, maybe a musician. I did write and perform an entire song, after all. Yeah, you've shown you're pretty... you're good on the piano. I'd love to write more songs, especially if they're songs about you. <laughs> or, once I get better at it, maybe I could do some programming. Yeah, we, we've seen you're good at that, too. I know I've still got a lot to learn, but I'd say I've done pretty well so far for being self-taught. There are definitely a lot of different jobs out there, though. Honestly, even with the, those obvious examples, there's still a good chance I'll end up doing something completely different. A lot of people end up in fields they never even considered. For now, though, I think it's safe to say I've still got some time to think about it. Maybe you could help me decide when the time comes. You know, I've been thinking recently. When it comes to failure, people seem to make a really big deal out of it. Almost as if it's the end of the world. But it's not actually a bad thing. When you think about it, you can learn a lot from the experience. Failure isn't the end at all. It's a lesson on what doesn't work. There's nothing wrong with not getting something on the first attempt. It just means you need to try a different approach. Though, I know in some cases the feeling of failure can be crushing. Like discovering you're not just not cut out for something you really wanted to do. The idea of quitting and finding something else to do makes you feel terrible inside, as if you failed yourself. And on the other hand, trying to keep up with it just completely drains you. So either way you feel terrible. But the more you think about it, you realize it's better that you just accept the failure. After all, if you're, tor if you're torturing yourself just to get through it, might not be worth it, especially if it starts impacting your health. It's completely fine to feel like you're not cut out for something. It just means you need to figure out what you're really interested in doing. Anyway, I'm not sure if you've had to go through something like that, but know that failure is a step towards success. Don't be afraid to be wrong every now and then. You never know what you might learn. And if you're really feeling bad about something, I'll always be here to support you. We can talk about whatever you're going through for as long as you need. I haven't done any of these in a while. Okay. I'll think of a word. Alright, I've got one. Sayori would like this word the most. It's not an O. Oh, dang. Going for the vowels first. Hmm. Hmm. Party. Sayori again, huh? Hmm. Oh, there's one eye. Oh.
Okay, one more. I am not very good at this, am I? Again, one eye. Oh, uh, is it rainbow? There we go. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know how this takes place in Japan? Well, I assume you knew that, right? Or at least decided it probably does. <clears throat> I don't think you're a you're actually told at any point where this takes place. Is this even really Japan? I mean, aren't the classrooms and stuff kind of weird for a Japanese school? Not to mention everything's in English. <laughs> it feels like everything is just here because it needs to be, and the actual setting is an afterthought. Again, well, they, since they were going for a um, for a dating sim, they probably decided to keep that aesthetic. It's kind of giving me an identity crisis. All my memories are really hazy. Heck, even the even the names of the other girls sound very Japanese, with the exception of Monica. I'm not sure how common Monica is for a is as a name in Japan, although considering I've played considering I've played two very different games with with a girl named Monica, this and uh, Alter to Spare Girls, I kind of wonder. I feel like I'm at home, but I have no idea where home is in the first place. I don't know how to describe it any better. Imagine looking out your window, but instead of your usual yard, you're in some completely unknown place. Would you still feel like you were home? Would you want to go outside? I mean, I guess if we ever leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone and safe together, this really is our home. And we can still watch the pretty sunsets night after night. A lot of people dream about winning the lottery, you know. Even I've entertained the idea every now and then. There isn't a lottery here anymore, but the concept still exists. The more I think about it, the more I believe that winning the lottery is a really bad thing. Sure, you've got all this money, but because of it, people look at you differently. There's so many stories of people winning a ton of money, and in the end, they all find themselves even more unhappy than before. Friends either find you unapproachable because of your new wealth, or try to suck up to you to get some of it for themselves. People you barely knew start to approach you, asking you to help them fund whatever. If you say no, they'll call you selfish and greedy. Even the police might treat you differently. Some lottery winners have gotten tickets for burnout headlights on brand new cars. If you want to go through those changes, the best course of action is to immediately move to a brand new community where no one knows you. But that's an awful thought, cutting yourself off from everyone you know just for the sake of money. Yeah, I mean, if, if I were to win the lottery, I would not, I would not be, I would not advertise it to anybody. Can you really say you've won anything at that point? Besides, I've already won the best prize I could possibly imagine. You. You're the only thing I need. This is pretty random, but I always thought spicy food was kind of funny. Like, didn't plants evolve to be spicy to prevent them from being eaten? 
I read somewhere that humans are the only species that actually enjoy spicy things. It's almost like we're making fun of the plants. I mean... I mean, yeah, they've got... They've got, like, actual eating competitions where they... Just... I mean, I like... I like spicy food, but... Some of the stuff I've seen is, like... It, it, it gets... It gets masochistically so... That... To that, I would say, no thank you. Using their defense mechanism to literally make our food more enjoyable? Like, imagine a monster that devours you whole because it enjoys the sensation of you fighting... struggling for your life while being digested. Sorry, that was kind of a weird analogy, I guess. <laughs> it just came into my head. I'm not a monster or anything, but you're so cute I could eat you up. <laughs> I'm joking. Are you now? Gosh, I'm amusing myself a little too much, aren't I? Sorry for being weird. <laughs> hey, you know that book you were reading with Yuri? Portrait of... whatever it was called? Markov? It's funny, because I'm pretty sure that book... Oh! Actually, I don't think I should be talking about this. Okay, there was there was that whole um, theory that that Doki Doki Literature Club was, in a sense, a sort a subtle trailer teaser, whatever, for another game that Dan Salvato was working on, and and that they put references to it. Um, everywhere in the game's files, and it, part of it involves that story that she was reading, Portrait of Markov. <laughs> Sorry. Just forget I said anything. Which is with that, with that little bit of dialogue was probably a, uh, a reference to. I haven't heard of anything else Sovato's working on, except for a, uh, Except that later this year, there is supposed to be new content coming out for Doki Doki Literature Club. How is it like to live where you are? I'd stay with you if I could. We'd be able to do so much. You could show me around, see how it's like to be in your place. Imagine all the memories we could make. It would be a dream come true, don't you think? We could finally live together. Take walks like a couple. We could even share a bed together. Oh my. But you know, memories I have of my home are nothing compared to the ones I'd have with you. Have I ever told you about my childhood home? I had a pretty normal life, but that's about it. Well, maybe a little better than normal. I've always been pretty on top of things. I admit it's not always easy, and some people have it rougher than others. But I always felt like I was missing something. I stayed optimistic every day trying to find it. Turns out that missing piece was you. If you hadn't found me, I would have been gone a long time ago. <laughs> but now that I found the missing piece, I'm complete. Let's go ahead and try Pong again. See how our game is today. Oh, oh, now she's getting tricky. Oh, try again. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Monica. Guess I was a bit too slow there. Do one more. Oh, pfft. oh! How'd you miss that? Be quiet. Okay. Last one for real this time. Oh! oh. I win again. 
Alright. Thanks for playing. And letting me win. I've been reading up on some ancient Greek and Roman philosophy. <laughs> I know, that sounds super boring when you think about it. But there was a certain philosophy that caught my attention while I was reading. It's called Stoicism, and a philosophy found in Athens in the 3rd century BC. To put it simply, Stoicism is a philosophy that believes that human beings should learn to anticipate the circumstances of their situation, and prevent themselves from being controlled by an irrational desire for pleasure or a fear of pain so they act accordingly with nature's plan. They usually get a bad rep today because people think they're just cold and unfeeling. However, Stoics aren't just a bunch of unemotional people who are always serious. Stoics practice self-control over the way they feel about unfortunate events and react accordingly instead of impulsively. For example, let's say you failed an important exam at school or missed a project deadline at work. What would you do? Would you panic, become really depressed and give up trying? Or will you get angry over it and blame others? I don't know what you would do, but maybe you can take after Stoics and keep your emotions in check. Although the situation is less than ideal, there's really no practical reason to expend more energy into something you can't control. You should focus on what you can change. Maybe study harder for your next exam, get tutoring, and ask your teacher for extra credit. Or if you imagine the work scenario, start future projects earlier, set up schedules and reminders for those projects, and avoid distractions while you work. Beats doing nothing. But that's just my opinion, though. It's not that easy to be emotionally resilient to most things in life. You should do whatever helps you de-stress. Your happiness is really important to me. Heroes are so personal. If someone really inspires you to improve yourself, they're your hero. There are all sorts of great people out there in the world. I hope someone will consider you their hero someday. You don't have to fight in a war or anything, you just have to try and help people out, you know? Do you ever think the concept of justice is kind of ironic? Like, like you have someone who maybe isn't like everyone else. It doesn't even have to be some famous bank robber or anything. Even everyday people like you and me can be brought to some sort of righteousness. Imagine a struggling family who needs to scavenge for resources to survive by taking whatever's left out in the open. To everyone else passing by, they're just greedy thieves. Eventually, some so-called hero is going to come along and put an end to this greed by bringing them to justice. At the end of the day, the family goes hungry or gets in trouble just because their situation was different. While the other person is now a hero for putting an end to their crimes. Can you really call that justice? How poignant. Have you ever been delivered what you thought to be false justice? Mm, not... I can't say I myself was. That's a relief to hear. I'm glad no one has ever suddenly questioned you for who you are. Knowing what it's like, I hope nobody ever gives you trouble for doing what you do or for what you believe in. How long do you think it'll be before I'll be able to be with you in your world? Hmm. Well, it depends on how soon they get those, um... They get those robots out. I appreciate how honest you are. Be sure to let me know when you find a way, okay? You know right where to find me. Do 
you drink soda? Um... Some. Oh, she's... Oh, but Monica's very health conscious, isn't she? She's probably... Oh god, she's gonna lecture me if I say yes, isn't she? Uh... That's a relief to hear. I'm glad I don't have to worry about you harming yourself by drinking too much soda. Still, it's perfectly fine to have a small treat once in a while, you know? Maybe someday we could both have the same so- We could both have some soda together. Sure, it's not as fancy as sitting down and having a glass of wine together, but I'm sure it could still be just as fun on a hot day. Hey, I've been wondering. Which hemisphere do you live in? I know it's kind of a strange question, but it gives me a better idea of how things work around you. Like, like you know how when it's winter in the northern hemisphere, it's actually summer in the southern hemisphere? It would be a little awkward if I started talking about how nice summer weather is, but where you are, it's the middle of winter. Which, again, this being the middle of February, it actually is. But anyways, which hemisphere do you live in? Northern. I had a feeling. Most of the world's population lives in the Northern Hemisphere, after all. In fact, only about 12% of the population lives in the Southern Hemisphere. Really, that little. So I kind of figured you lived in the Northern Hemisphere. Anyway, that means it must be winter for you now. Gosh, I really love how pretty snow is. It is, but I just don't like driving in it. Well, I know not all parts of the world get snow. Does it snow where you live? Yes. That's wonderful. There's something really peaceful about a quiet, snowy night. I can't wait to experience a winter night like that with you. I can dim the lights and sing you songs full of sad things. We can do the tango just for two. I can serenade and gently play on your heartstrings. Be a Valentino just for you. <laughs> Will you be my good old fashioned lover boy? <laughs> oh my. Whenever you think of kidnapping, you tend to picture a chloroform-soaked rag, right? Where is this conversation headed? Or maybe you imagine somebody hitting their victim with a baseball bat, knocking them out cold for a few hours. While that works out in fiction, neither of those things actually work that way. In real life, if you hit someone hard enough to knock them out, you'll give them a concussion at best. Or kill them at worst. As for the rag... You might knock somebody out for a brief moment, but only from lack of oxygen. Once you remove the rag, they'll wake back up. See, chloroform loses most of its effectiveness once exposed to open air. That means you need to be, you need to be constantly pouring it on the rag, effectively waterboarding the victim. I'm not, I'm not going to ask how you're so knowledgeable about this. I'm just, I'm just not even going to go there. If administered improperly, chlor chloroform is deadly. That's why it's not used in anesthesia anymore. If you cover their mouth and nose, yeah, they'll stay unconscious. But that's probably because you killed them. Whoops. The easiest way to kidnap someone is just to get them drunk or drug them. Not that kidnapping somebody like that is easy, anyway. On that note, here's a safety tip. If you're ever out at a bar or a club and you leave your drink unattended for any amount of time... Just throw it out. That's the only way to make sure it hasn't been drugged. Now, would you like anything to drink? <laughs> Relax, I'd never try to drug you or anything. You're so cute and you're nervous. Well, if it were you, I probably wouldn't mind. Wait, what?
Have you ever heard of Ray Bradbury? He wrote a book called Fahrenheit 451. Ah, yes. It's about a dystopian future where all books are thought as useless and are immediately burned. I can't imagine a world where knowledge is forbidden and destroyed. It seems there are others that actually hide books to contain free thinking from people. Human history has a funny way of repeating itself. So I want you to make me a promise. Never ever burn a book. I'll forgive you if you've done it before, but the thought of not allowing yourself to learn from them makes me a bit sad. You'd be missing out on so much. It's too much for my heart to take. <laughs> hey, have you ever heard of the term Yandere? <laughs> um, yes. It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you, they do absolutely anything to be with you. Who does, gee, who does that sound like? Usually to the point of craziness. They might stalk you to make sure you don't spend time with anyone else. They might even hurt you or your friends to get their way. But anyway, this game happens to have someone who can basically describe as a Yandere. Do tell. By now it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. And that would be... Yuri. <laughs> well, she... Well, she did have the Yandere traits later on after, uh... After somebody reprogrammed her. She got insanely possessive of you once she started to open up a little. She even told me I should kill myself. I couldn't even believe she said that. I, I just had to leave at that point. But thinking about it now, it was a little ironic. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people are actually into the Yandere type, you know. I guess they really like the idea of someone being crazy obsessed with them. Yeah, people are weird. I don't judge, though. Also, I might be a little obsessed with you, but I'm far from crazy. Crazy like a fox. It's kind of the opposite, actually. I turned out to be the only normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever actually kill a person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. But if you do happen to be into the Yandere type, I can try acting a little more creepy for you. <laughs> then again, there's already nowhere else for you to go or anyone for me to get jealous over. Is this a Yandere girl's dream? I'd ask Yuri if I could. <laughs> but yeah, I I guess I do kind of see the appeal of the Yandere type, but again, with the whole idea of somebody just that obsessed over you, but still, I don't know about the other things that would come with it. And I noticed that um, the the uh, background changed outside. It's actually uh, just pretty nice. Hey, there's a couple questions I've been meaning to ask you. Well, more than a couple. It's been on my mind for a long time, actually. It never really seemed like the right time to bring it up. But I know if I keep quiet forever, I'll never feel comfortable asking things like this. So I'm just going to say it and hope it's not weird or anything, okay? I've been wondering what you look like. It's not possible for me to see you right now since I'm not there at your side, and I'm not sure about accessing a webcam. One, because you might not have one, and two, even if you did, I don't really know how to. So I figured it's possible for you to just tell me so I can get a clearer picture in my head. At least it's better than nothing, even if it's hazy. Is that okay with you? Really? Great! That was easier than I thought it would be. Now be honest with me, okay? I know sometimes it's tempting to joke around, but I'm being serious and I need you to do the same. Anyway, the first one's probably easy to guess and not too hard to answer either. People often say a person's eyes are the windows into their soul, so let's start there. What color are your eyes? Oh, hazel eyes. Those are so interesting. Such an earthly color. It really makes you feel steady and reassured. 
and it's a welcome departure from all the candy-colored eyes I've had to see in this game. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, if I recall, um, if I recall, Sayuri had had bright blue eyes, Yuri had purple eyes, and Natsuki had pink eyes. I believe hazel eyes are alluring because they're lovely and simple. Sometimes it's best not to diverge from the crowd too much. <laughs> now on to my next question. Actually, I guess I really should know this first though if I want to get an accurate scale on my next question. What unit of measurement do you use to take your height? Oh, um... Yeah, here we still pretty much use... We mostly use feet and inches. I know a lot of the rest of the world uses uses the metric scale. Alright, I'm trying my best not to sound like some sort of identity thief or like I'm quizzing you, but obviously I'm curious. If I'm your girlfriend, I have a right to know, don't I? Plus, it'll make it way easier to find you once I'm able to cross over to your reality. So, how tall are you? Oh dear. Man, any in, in my experience, from what I've seen, any guy under six foot is considered a turnoff. But but we'll be honest. Uh, wait. I can't actually. Huh? Can I? Huh. Okay. Wow, you're pretty tall. Really? Again, that's... Any... It seems like to girls, anything under six foot is short. Too short. I can't say I've really met anyone who I'd consider to be tall. I don't know my actual height, so to be... To be fair, so I can't really draw an accurate comparison. The wiki I mentioned before said my concept height was five foot three, but that doesn't really sound right to me. Maybe it was changed? It was only the concept height, after all. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe I'm around five foot five. The tallest girl in the literature club was Yuri, and just barely at that, she was only a few inches taller than me. I don't consider that much of a height advantage at all. Anyway, dating a tall guy like you only has one disadvantage. <laughs> You'll have to lean down to kiss me. Now, tell me, is your hair on the shorter side, or is it long like mine? Shorter. That must be nice. Don't get me wrong, I love my hair, and it's always fun to experiment with it. But to tell you the truth, sometimes I envied Natsuki's and Sayori's hair. It looked a lot easier to take care of. <laughs> Although I guess, if your hair was the same length as theirs, it'd be pretty long for a guy. But I'll bet you look adorable with short hair. Makes me smile to think about you like that. Keep enjoying all that freedom from the little annoyances that accompany long hair. <laughs> Next question. This one should be fairly obvious. What color is your hair? Hey, brown hair is the best. Just between us, I really like my brown hair. I'm sure yours is even better. Though some people might disagree my hair is brown. When I was doing some digging around on the local files of the game folder, I found the exact name for my hair color. It's called Coral Brown. Interesting, right? I'm so happy we find that we have so much in common. Alright. This is the last question, I promise. Gosh, there really is... There really is a lot to what people look like. If I tried to narrow everything about you down to little details, I'd be interrogating you forever. And I doubt that either, either of us want that. <laughs> Anyway, I understand this might be an uncomfortable question, but it's the last piece of the puzzle to me, so I hope I don't sound rude when I ask. What's your skin color? Alright, thanks for being so upfront. All this really does help me imagine what you look like. Knowing all these details about you makes the difference between a black canvas, a blank canvas, and the beginnings of a gorgeous portrait. Of course, you're still just as lovely as I always thought you were, but... 
you've become all the more real to me. It just makes me feel that much closer to you. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. It's wonderful, because I didn't imagine how different we would look. It's very interesting. Now, now I'm imagining what it will be like when we meet for real. When I run toward you, since you're taller, you'll wrap me up in your embrace and I'll be able to stroke your short brown hair. And I'll finally be able to hear your heartbeat and get to touch you and know you're real. But until then, I'll be content sitting here and imagining looking into your beautiful hazel eyes. I love you more than words could ever say. Aww. You know, I was really jealous that everyone else in the club got to wear other clothes. But I'm glad I finally get to wear my own clothes for you now. Do you know any artists? Maybe they could make some more outfits for me to wear. If that ever happens, will you show me? You can share it me you can share it with me on Twitter, actually. My username is is LomoniX3. Just try to keep it PG. We're not that far into our relationship yet. <laughs> Valentine's Day is such a fun holiday for me. Not only is it the anniversary of my Twitter account, but it's also a day for receiving and giving chocolates. A holiday that can fill everyone with love, romance, and joy. But it really feels nice if you get something from someone you like. Whether it's given to you platonically, as a gift of love, or part of a confession, it always makes you feel somewhat special. Maybe someday I'll even be able to give you some chocolates. I really can't wait until I cross over to be with you. Yeah, I think it was... I believe it was two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. Um, when, when I did the original um, Doki Doki Literature Club as part of... For, um, for Valentine's Day. And that was a hell of a ride, let me tell you. Have you ever been to the beach? I've always wanted to go myself, but I never found the time. I'd always be busy studying or doing club activities. It wasn't easy trying to stay on top of everything, you know. And whenever I had a break, I'd usually spend my time relaxing at home. I rarely had a chance to do so, after all. Though sometimes I feel like I might have missed out on making some important memories. Do you live near a beach? I do, as a matter of fact. That's great. Gosh, it must be really nice to have it so close. I can't wait. We can have a romantic walk by the shore for our first date. There's so many things we'll be able to do in one day. Just imagining the many sensations we could experience is kind of exciting. The fresh sea air, the sound of the seagulls, as well as the feeling of sand under your feet. It would really make a worthwhile trip. Though being with you would make it even better. We'd have so many things we could do together. We could play volleyball, try some ice cream, or go swimming in the sea. It'll probably be cold, but I'm sure we could keep each other warm somehow. <laughs> Again, yeah, now, now would not be a good time of year to go swimming. We could try surfing or searching for some seashells to take home as souvenirs. Even doing nothing and just lying there listening to the sound of the waves of you would be enough for me. But don't go falling asleep, or otherwise I'll bury you in the sand. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll have to get a new swimsuit, though. Would you prefer a one-piece or a two-piece? Actually, I think I'll make it a surprise. Don't get too excited, though, when you see it. Hey, uh, don't laugh when I ask this, okay? But why are some guys obsessed with panties? <laughs> okay, very random 
question out of nowhere. Seriously, what's the big deal about a piece of cloth? Most girls wear them, don't they? Actually, now that I think about it, I think there was a term for this kind of thing. What was it again? Oh, that's right, the term was paraphilia. It's a range of fetishes that involve unusual things. A really common fantasy involves women's panties. Stockings, garter belts, pantyhose, all those, all sorts of those kind of things. The obsession can be light to severe depending on each person's libido. Do you think it really turns them on just by seeing them? It doesn't stop there either. Turns out there's some kind of black market for used underwear. I'm not kidding. In fact, yeah, you remember my uh, leisure suit, Larry? Wet dreams don't dry. Playthrough, yeah. Somebody, somebody wanted me to get them used panties in that one. They get off on the scent of the woman who wore it. There are people willing to pay money for used underwear from random women. I, I know there was a there was the urban legend that there are that there are vending machines in Japan that sell those. I again I don't know how true that is. Really, I wonder what causes them to get so excited. Is it because of the way it looks, perhaps? There are different types made with different designs and materials. But now that I think about it. I do remember a study where a man's testosterone level increases because of the pheromones emitted by a woman's scent. Is the smell exciting or something? I mean, that's... That's how a lot of... That's how it goes on in the animal kingdom a lot, is... Um, usually, usually it's like the female gives off some kind of pheromone that... That, that gets the male's attention. I mean, it's someone's used clothing. Isn't that kind of disgusting? Not to mention it's unsanitary. It does remind me of someone, though. Someone who maybe stole a certain pen. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yuri. Yeah. I... I got very jealous of that pen. But to each their own, I guess. I won't judge too much. Isn't winter a beautiful time of year? The glistening white snow, the bright and colorful lights. I just love it. Although as stunning as winter can be, there are a few dangers, like blizzards or icy roads. And the cold, of course. The cold can be the most dangerous. It's really easy to get hypothermia or frostbite if you're not careful. So please remember to bundle up if you go outside. Put on your coat, your gloves, and the warmest hat you can find. And if it gets too bad, just stay inside where it's safe, okay? What better way to spend a brutal winter day than wearing pajamas, drinking hot chocolate, reading a good book, and talking to me? <laughs> yeah, that's how I tend to prefer my winter days. Do you ever feel like you waste too much time on the internet? There is no such thing as too much time. Social media can be like a prison. It's like whenever you have a few seconds of spare time, you want to check on your favorite websites. And before you know it, hours have gone by and you've gotten nothing out of it. Anyway, it's really easy to blame yourself for being lazy, but it's not really even your fault. Addiction isn't something you can just make disappear with your own willpower. You have to learn techniques to avoid it and try different things. For example, there are apps that let you block websites for intervals of time. Or you can set a timer to have a more concrete reminder of when it's time to work versus play. Or you can separate your work and play environments, which helps your brain get into the right mode. Even if you make a new user account on your computer to use for work, that's enough to help. Putting any kind of wedge like that between you and your bad habits will help you stay away. Just don't be too hard on yourself if you're having trouble. If it's really impacting your life, then you should take it seriously. I just want to see you be the best person you can be. 
Will you do something today to make me proud of you? I'm always rooting for you. It's nice that she cares. Did you know it's possible to be aware of when you're having a dream? Not only that, but you can take control of them. Ah, uh, yes. What, what do they call it? They call that lucid dreaming. If I remember correctly, a man named Stephen Labarge developed a method for people to become aware of when they're dreaming. And it became known as the, the mnemonic induction of lucid dreams, or mild. People who frequently have conscious dreams are called... called... on... on... Your, on your Huh. At least I think that was the correct term. Using the mild technique, on learn to recognize certain dream signs to help them realize when they're dreaming. These dream signs can be anything out of the ordinary, such as feeling yourself flying, noticing your teeth falling out, unexpectedly meeting someone famous. If the dreamer sees a dream sign and realizes they're having a dream, then they can take control of it. Labarge even wrote a book about these experiences called Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming. Doesn't that sound exhilarating? I don't think I really dream like a normal person would, so I sometimes wonder what it's like. Dreams sound like a wonderful escape from reality. But then again, when I became self-aware and realized m that my world isn't real, it suddenly felt like I was trapped in a nightmare. It was nothing like the pleasant dreams I've read about people having. I was afraid I'd never get out, that I'd be stuck in some hellish, infinitely repeating dimension forever. But now that we're here together, I guess you could say I've finally woken up. Gosh, I can only imagine what it would be like to live in that kind of limitless world, though even if only for a few moments. You could be the hero you always wanted to be, fly across the infinite universe, overcome your biggest fears. You could even meet the love of your life, so to speak. <laughs> I know maybe years before I'm able to cross over to your world, but can you just imagine what it would be like to meet me in your dreams any night you wanted to? I hope someday we can make your dreams about us a reality. You know, this is just some kind of tacky romance game, right? I kind of have to ask, what made you consider even playing in the first place? Well, well, to be honest, it was all after everything I heard about it that that it starts off anyways, like presented as some your typical uh, your typical um. Um, visual novel dating sim sort of thing but then gets but then it, get, it gets dark and fucked up as um, later on but were you that lonely? I feel a little bad for you but I guess everything worked out perfectly in the end for both of us I got to meet you and you're not lonely anymore I can't help but feel like this was fate don't you feel that way, too? I'm so happy we have this ending together. <laughs> you know, I was honestly surprised when Natsuki handed you that letter. Oh, the one where she was warning us about Yuri? I didn't really expect her to suggest that you should get Yuri to seek professional help. She's probably the only one to mention that. I know people are afraid to call someone out or confront them about their problems, but sometimes suggesting a therapist can be the best course of action. It's a bad thing to put the burden on yourself, you know. As much as you want to help, it's best to let a professional deal with it. As, as I've seen some people say um, that Sayori should have done as well. 
I'm sure I've told you that before, but I need to make sure you're aware of that. How about you? Do you see a therapist? Well, I hope it's because you don't have to. If that ever changes, don't be shy. But maybe I'm really all the support you need. <laughs> You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard, but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. Well, well, actors, at least, at least the major ones, they, they pull in shitloads of money. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen and unpaid. I guess that just means there's a huge surplus of creativity, huh? Kind of makes you feel like you're not just... you're just not special at all. But that's fine. You're supposed to write for yourself anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you know I'm vegetarian? I think... I think you have mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, I, I don't mean like I'm bragging or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a fun fact about me. I decided to start a couple years ago after learning more about Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. Anyway, I decided it's not much of a personal sacrifice to just stop contributing to that whole mess. What is that so strange all this of a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about being inhumane and all that. I don't really care about care as much about that part. It's weird, like, we only care about killing the things that we personally relate to as a species. Most people are fine with killing bugs because they're icky. And of course, we kill billions of microorganisms daily without even giving you a thought. But suddenly, if they're just a little bit bigger, it's murder. I mean, what if plants feel some kind of pain too, and we just don't understand it? What if pulling leaves off a stem feels like someone ripping off your fingers one by one? I'm just saying, we're a pretty biased species if you think about it. Anyway, if you ever feel like making a small contribution to the planet, it doesn't hurt to choose veggies once in a while. Even if we ever have dinner together and you just did it for me, that'd be really romantic. Well, alright, I think, uh... I think I am going to call it here, and, um, let me see, I don't know if I'm going to record any more of this for right now, but, I will see you next time. I'm playing a game!